Hey, hey, what's up guys? This is Mike. Welcome back to the channel. High five. So in today's video, we're gonna show you how to install TrueNAS Scale using a simple USB drive. And this installation works with a new PC, an old PC, or even a new PC build. And guys and gals, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I answer all questions. So in this video, we're gonna use a very old PC for our TrueNAS Scale installation. And don't worry, we're gonna put the minimum PC requirements for the TrueNAS Scale server right here. That way you can make sure you've got enough power. One thing to note about this USB installation, this will wipe out all the data to the drive that you're installing it to, including the OS. Also, you should have a minimum of two hard drives for storage. With two hard drives, you can run them in mirror configuration for redundancy. However, installing more drives is more better, but at least start with two. And lastly, if you wanna learn how to install a Pi-hole server on TrueNAS Scale, we'll have a video link at the end of this video. It's a must watch. So first things first, let's install the hard drives. Oh, and guys, don't forget, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. It helps the algorithm, thanks. All right, so we're set up with two SATA cables going into the motherboard and our two power connections that will power our hard drives. There's one, and we'll do exactly the same there, and then we'll connect the power right there. The installation process for TrueNAS Scale is smooth and straightforward, just like this coffee. So first you want to download the TrueNAS Scale ISO image, then save it to your computer, and then you want to download Bellina Etcher, and then launch it, and then click on Flash from File, and then click on the ISO image. Then next you want to select Target, which is the USB drive. And then it's gonna ask you to format the USB drive and go ahead and do that and then start the process. And this takes about five to 10 minutes. And then once you're done, simply plug the USB into your soon to be home media server. And now you wanna reboot your home media server and then go into the BIOS setting by pressing F2. Keep pressing that until you get into the BIOS settings. And once you're in the BIOS setting, then go to boot priority, then select the USB to be the boot drive. And then next, reboot the computer. And from here, TrueNAS will start the installation process. And this installation process takes around 10 minutes. So go ahead and select one for installation. Next, you wanna choose a hard drive to install the TrueNAS scale software. And you want to install the software to the small SSD drive. Next, go ahead and select one for admin user. Next, change the password to whatever you want. I recommend a strong password. And go ahead and create the swap. And then next, go ahead and reboot the computer. Once you get everything installed and reboot the system, you're gonna see this screen. And take note at the very top of the network IP address. You're gonna use this IP address in any browser on your network. The next you wanna log in, I have admin as my username, and then type in my password, and here's the dashboard. So now we're gonna take a look at the dashboard and take a look at all the menus, and then we'll create a storage pool. All right, now that we're logged in, we can see our TrueNAS scale dashboard and all the widgets. And we have six here, and uh, we can reorder these if you want. Hit the reorder, you can move them around and customize them, it's pretty cool. So just do as you will with that. You can also configure, you can uh, add or subtract these if you'd like, like that. Go back and add them, super easy. So the only complaint I would have about this dashboard is there's not enough of these widgets. If you look over here to these tabs, I feel that each tab should be a widget. I don't know why they didn't do that. Uh, maybe in a software update, they could add that. But other than that, this looks pretty good, very functional. So let's go to storage and create a pool. First things first, we're gonna call it pool. Make it super simple. And we'll hit next. And because we only have two hard drives, we're gonna be doing mirror. If we have more drives, we can set this up as RAID Z1 or RAID Z2, but right now, just gonna do the mirror and hit next. And we'll go through all these and just go next through all of these. And uh, create the pool. Confirm, it's gonna wipe these hard drives, but there's nothing on the hard drives anyways. And this should take about 30 seconds to create the pool. It's pretty quick. And there we go. Here is our storage dashboard with topology, usage, ZFS health and disk health. And one thing also, if you want to delete a pool, go to export, disconnect, click on all these and then type in pool or whatever the name of your pool is and hit this button right here. It will delete the pool. We're not gonna do that today, but that's how you would do that. All right, the next thing we need to do is go to credentials and we're gonna go to users. We gotta create a user so we can uh, start using the NAS. So let's go to add, and we're gonna type in, well, 
The name of this YouTube channel sounds good to me. So that's what it is. Ultimate Tech Hub. Username is uHub. I do like that. Pretty cool. And we'll type in a really difficult password to put in. And all right. Everything else looks good. You can go down here and make any changes if you'd like. Just make sure here, this is checked. Samba authentication is checked and we're good there. And we now have uHub as a user. All right, very good. Next thing we need to do is go to data sets. We need to create a data set. And here we go. So add data set. And we're gonna add a, what I call a directory that we'll be accessing. And so it's pool is our path and then we need to add a name and we'll give it the name UTH, or Ultimate Tech Hub. And we can look down here, everything is good. Everything is good, except for generic. Go ahead and do SMB, and you want to hit save. All good there. So now let's go to shares, and we need to go to Windows SMB, and we need to add the path. So we're down here. And here we go, pool. And we can call it my data. All right, and that's the path we're going to be going to. It's kind of the directory, I guess you would call it, is the directory, UTH. Save it. Yes, and enable the service, absolutely. First time we're doing this, it's now enabled. Woohoo! All right, so now we need one more step. So let's go back. Let's go back to data sets, and let's go back to permissions. Let's go to UTH, permissions, and we we'll go to edit. And we're gonna go in and add a user. So add item and user. We could do group, owner, group. We're doing user and look for uHub, uHub. Now down here, you wanna make the change to full control. What full control. So that's it right there. So looks good. Save access control list. Give that a minute to process and we should be good to go. All right, let's check and make sure that we can get into our network here. So let's go down to network and we'll type in this, our IP address of TrueNet scale and then directory. It's gonna ask for the username, uHub, and then password, super complex password, and we are in. There we go. So after you install TrueNAS Scale, you have tons of software options that you can install. For instance, like a Pi-hole DNS server, a Plex media server, a Jellyfin media server, and much, much more. But the best part is, now you have a TrueNAS Scale media server. And that's it guys and gals, this is the easiest TrueNAS Scale USB installation you're ever gonna see. And with that, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. And for God's sakes, smash the bell icon. And we'll see you in the next video real soon. High five. Peace.